deficit in half by the end of my first term in office. President Obama speaking about the $3 trillion budget and this additional $410 billion omnibus spending bill that was passed by the Senate on Tuesday. Joining us this morning, Senator Bob Corker, a member of the Senate Banking Committee and the Energy and Natural Resources Committee, joins us from the Rotunda. Good to see you, Senator. Good to be with you, uh, as I, always. I love some of the headlines in the New York Post this morning. One is of the, of the president uh, signing that, that spending bill, and the headline is, Obama, I hate all this pork and I approve it. Uh, it's awfully difficult to criticize earmarks when you got $5 billion worth, right? Yes, that's correct. Look, uh, the amount of spending this administration uh, has laid out in their budget with then the stimulus package, this appropriations bill that just passed, and then this morning, reading of Tim Geithner's comments uh, regarding the G20 meeting that's coming up and a, and a second stimulus, as it looks like, uh, it's just amazing. It's mind-boggling. To say the budget is honest, uh, one of the greatest slights of hand in this budget is the whole issue of cap and trade. Uh, they're showing $645 billion uh, being subsumed into this budget, and they say they're giving it back with this uh, make work pay tax cut. That was a separate policy that was already announced in part of his campaign. Uh, this is a huge expansion of government, and to say that we're reducing the deficit, I mean, that's almost on automatic pilot getting it down to where it is. Much tougher uh, cuts need to occur after, especially this huge stimulus package that's been put in place. So uh, this, is, uh, this is a huge expansion, and I think very, very concerning to, to most Americans. Uh, Bob, good morning. John Sununu here. How are you? John Sununu. Uh, Gosh, I hated for you to leave us. Well, I mean, nice our, 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 intelligence, our intelligence quotient <laughs> dropped the day you stepped out. So. Bob, you know, we, they only have a certain amount of time for you here, so we, we need to stay focused. But you mentioned a couple. You mentioned cap and trade. You mentioned the overall amount of spending that's in the budget. And uh, you mentioned Treasury coming back for more money, perhaps more money for the banks. Those are three big issues that I would imagine some Senate Democrats are going to push back on. Uh, do you see that happening in the Senate with Senate Democrats trying to put together a budget? And which of those do you think might cause the president the most trouble? Well, I think, uh, I, I think definitely the, the cap and trade issue is going to cause some issues. I, I, I think there's actually developing an internal squabble. Uh, there's a sense that possibly during bucket budget reconciliation, which, as you know, only takes 50 votes, uh, 51 votes, uh, that there may be an attempt to do something on cap and trade there. I think there's going to be tremendous uh, pushback by Senate Democrats there. Uh, another stimulus package, uh, when, and uh, I think there'll be a lot of pushback. And on another round of TARP, when we still don't know uh, what the plan is. I mean, it's an amazing thing. I, I just saw Jim Bunning in the hallway coming here and thought, uh, told him, you know, it's amazing our Treasury Secretary is laying out plans for the G20, but hasn't yet let us know what we're doing here in the country. So uh, I hate to be too humorous today, but, uh, but it's, it's just an ironic and, and interesting thing to watch as we move ahead. What do you think is going to happen at the G20? I think, uh, I think there'll be discussions, obviously, I, I'm pulling for Merkel uh, in Germany, but I think there'll be discuss discussions about huge amounts of spending. I don't know how internal spending helps uh, countries that spend, uh, that are so focused on exports. I don't know how that helps them so much, but I think there's going to be a discussion there, and certainly uh, discussions about what we need to do regarding the financial crisis. And by the way, as you know, being on the banking committee in, in the past, I mean, we do need to coordinate those efforts in the future as it relates to regulatory issues. Bob, one of the issues we're talking about this morning is mark to market. There's a hearing in the House about modifications that might be made uh, to mark to market that would make sense. You're on the banking committee. Uh, you know your colleagues. Right. Uh, what's their sense on the Senate side? And is there a particular proposal that you would support to make modification that would provide some relief for banks but still provide the transparency investors need? Sure. You know, I, I talked to Chris Cox a great deal before he sent out the loosened guidelines that actually give banks the ability, uh, give financial institutions the ability to use their heads uh, when they determine the values of these assets. The holdup has been through the public accounting areas. We've been meeting with them, John, to, to try to get them to, to issue guidance that, that coincides with what the SEC has done. What we need to do is not do away with mark to market. I mean, throwing that out the window to me is ridiculous, but to give institutions 
the ability to use proper judgment when they're valuing these assets and to actually move them from category to category where they're held for maturity or available for sale, conditions change. And I'd like for them to have some flexibility there. But I don't think doing away with mark to market uh, all together is, is a sensible thing to do. Hey, hey Senator, it, it, it's Becky. You know, earlier this week we had Warren Buffett on the program, and, and he said that he would like to see uh, members of Congress get behind the president and the administration at this point, see a little right. less dissent. Those comments were echoed yesterday by Jamie Dimon. As a member right. of the minority, what, what do you think when you hear that? Um, well, look, uh, there are numbers of things that uh, we want to work with the president on. I, I you know, the. I've been a little incensed by the sleight of hand on the cap and trade issue on budget, but look, I supported the president on S chip. Uh, there'll be a number of things that we will move. At. Look on uh, on reforms to Social Security and Medicare. Absolutely, I uh, want to work closely with them. That's look. That's the elephant in the room. Uh, much of the other things that we talk about are only short term. We have some huge issues, $86 trillion in unfunded liabilities there. I plan to stand side by side as we work on those issues. We're going to have a little bit of a rough start because I think this has been such a huge change. We still need to solve this financial crisis and, and that plan needs to be laid out and we need to stick to it and investors need to know what they can count on in the future. I look forward to working with them on that. So uh, look, I, I know we said some things today that uh, are, are you know, not necessarily uh, uh, you know, supportive of all the things they're doing, but there are a lot of areas where I look forward to working with this president. I want him to be successful. Our country and the world need for this president to be successful. Right. And I think after the first six months, I have a sense we may, may be able to move together. Senator, you and Lamar Alexander have written some legislation that would push back on EFCA, uh, the Free Choice Act. Is that gonna, is that gonna be an effective way to, to get that thing off the rails? Um, I think it just highlights, look, at the end of the day, uh, I know the president made comments in a closed meeting in Miami that was taped saying that uh, the Freedom of Choice Act, which should be obviously called card check, uh, it's going to become law this year. I question that. I really do. I think as people have watched uh, the UAW, uh, as union members, by the way, are 76% opposed uh, to card check, and as they learn about what it really does, 88% of them are opposed. I, I think uh, I think they're going to have a difficult time passing that this year. Uh, I think all of us know uh, how terrible that would be for working Americans, for our country as a whole, and I think you can just watch uh, what's happening with GM and Chrysler and Ford and understand how heavy-handed uh, union tactics can destroy companies. Something about uh, something you have first-hand knowledge about, that's for sure, Senator. Yes, sir. Uh, that's right. Good to see you again. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, good to be with you. Senator I'll see Porter. you soon. Yes, Thank sir. You, Thank you.